Hi everyone, welcome to my studio vlog 5. Uh, so today I'm actually going to be making my first ever clay pins. Um, I saw the cutest clay pins ever uh, being promoted by a shop on um, Instagram. Like I follow a lot of small business owners and there's quite a few on there that have clay pins and I'm like, that is so awesome and like very personal and also it's just handmade and I love doing crafts so I said I'm gonna give it a try so I ended up buying some white clay you know in the small packaging first I wanted to test it out see if I liked it and I will say I love it um, I think I found myself a new hobby I had never ever used clay in before like besides play-doh you know I've never clay like this so I was so excited um, I did have some recording trouble. I need to get a new cutting mat when it comes to recording videos that require cutting because this cutting mat does not process well with any camera I use. Um, I've tried two different webcams and it just doesn't like to... Uh, no, it just doesn't like to. So, um, you will see me pulling off the cutting mat anytime I'm done cutting. I tried doing a ghost at first. I didn't like how it looked, so I went ahead and grabbed the clay again and started rolling again. Yes, I'm using a regular rolling pin. We, like, never use it, so I said, hey, why not use it for my clay? And, um, I tried cutting out a ghost again. No, I think it was a bat this time. And, um, no. I decided to do a pumpkin, oh my gosh, so that's how bad this like lighting right here was. Um, I do apologize for that, but as you can see, I started doing a pumpkin and I was like, ooh, I like how this pumpkin came out. Um, the clay was still a little bit hard, so I started trying to mold it and just kind of shape it in my own little way here. But overall, that little pumpkin came out perfect. I set that aside and then I went ahead and continued to make more. This one's just off the top of my head, I will say, if you're making your own clay pins. Have some designs already drawn out. You could even use them as a little stencil. Um, this time I decided to, you know, get a little ghost out, but make it more like waka waka looking, you know, like Pac-Man style um, ghosties. So I went ahead and did that. And I honestly love how those shapes came out. They came out so great. Um, I tried to just use this little bit of clay up until like the end to see how many um, pins I can get out of it. Uh, it was definitely a very tiring process um, because I had like a little bit of art block I feel when it came to this. I tried doing a bat here and I felt like the bat was too small because I was thinking of the backing, uh, which is something really good to consider when you're making uh, these clay pins is, all right, is my backing going to fit on there properly? Um, and then also it just didn't have the bottom so I tried to add some clay to sculpt the bottom and I just, I just didn't like it. I was like, I'm going to toss that idea. Maybe I could do another one later. Um, I'll see if I could do another bat later on, but it was just too complicated the way I was trying to do it. So um, I decided to go ahead and roll it out again and tried to do something different. I was thinking, what else can I do? And I thought about doing a, um, oh, what was it? A broom and I was like oh a broom would be so cute like a little witch broom but then it was too thin and I said no um, witch broom just isn't gonna work out so I'm gonna go ahead and re-knead this and uh, try to roll it out again so I did it again I got back to the cutting board and I said what can we do now well a witch hat a witch hat would be perfect I could do the little swoop of the hat not too too thick and I think it would be perfect so this witch hat came to life and I love it. I am obsessed with the shape. I said, yeah, this is perfect. I just needed to knead out with my fingers a little bit. So then I had my, my ghost, my pumpkin, and my witch. And I said, all right, what else? We have a little bit of clay left. Let me see what else I can end up making with this. And I ended up making a, um, a candy corn, but I didn't want just a regular candy corn, um, which y'all will see here in a little bit when we start painting. Um, so I went ahead and just started sculpting out my little candy corn, making sure that it's exactly how I want it to be. And I said, all right, I got a little bit more clay left. What can I do now? Um, this is where just ideas, I was like, all right, I need to come up with ideas. I just did a little tombstone. 
I was like, that is perfect. I do like a little RIP on it, or add like a little skull and crossbones, and I love it. So it was a perfect shape, and I kept watching YouTube videos, and people were saying, you want to be simple. I did need a little more clay though, because I wanted to make sure that my pins were a little bit of thick, like thick enough, you know, to be baked and held on and all that so I added a little bit more so I used about 75% of the clay that I had and I made this little coffin um like old school style wooden coffin and I was like this is perfect oh my gosh I made my little RIP tombstone and now I got the coffin to go with it uh, absolutely adorable so I had a little bit left and I said okay what next a cat Yes, let's do a cat, uh, but just the cat head because I was like, I don't know where to get started with the full black cat, but definitely I feel like it should be something that I do. So now that I got that cat sculpted out, I'm like, now I'm in the last straw. I have this small little ball of clay, but I need to go ahead and shape it out as perfect as I can. Um, oh, I did mess up on the cat. I, that cat was just not going for me so i went ahead and reshaped it as you can see resculpted it and everything this one came out better so after this cat we're on the last straw it was just crazy i had these many left and i had a little bit of clay left but i didn't want to add any more clay so i said what am i going to do with this little ball um let me just shape it into a moon so i did and i started flattening it out and then just kind of shaped it with my fingers and i made like a crescent little moon it looks like a little croissant um my boyfriend says it looks like a banana and i started testing all these out on my backing card and seeing if they would work out and then i put the little moon on there and i was like this well this is kind of big compared to all the other ones but it fits i got some of this little uh wax paper put them on there and got them ready to bake so let's go on to baking so i brought them onto this little pan excuse how dirty my little baking oven is it is absolutely gross um i have been begging to get a new one like the little door is even broken um so i have to be very careful when bringing it down like it doesn't even stop so i went ahead and set it to uh 2 30 and then it said online to put it for 30 minutes i didn't know about thickness at the time um but i went ahead and did it for 30 minutes so we waited it dinged i took them out um and when i took them out they didn't seem too too hot so i'm used to the oven being a lot hotter than this when we make our bagels so i went ahead and took it out and I checked them. Yes, I just went ahead and touched them as soon as I took them out. I was like, I don't care if this is going to be burning hot. I'm just going to touch them. I don't know why my mind was just like, let's touch them. But I was really impatient. They felt a little squishy still in some areas. And I felt like they still needed to be baked a little bit longer. So um, after touching quite a few of them, I decided to go ahead and put them back into the oven. Um, but it did take a little bit of just, like, I wasn't sure, you know, it was the first time I was working with clay. Um, overall, it was a pretty good experience, though. I'm really glad that I took them out when they, yeah, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and put them back into the oven. Um, you'll see I have a lot of trouble just grabbing the pan back. I don't know what's going on. My, me and oven mitts. So, we put them back into the oven. Afterwards, I went ahead and added to the toast. Um, I, it's about five minutes, I believe. Five minutes passed and we ding. So now it's ready. Let's go ahead and take them out. Hope for that about 35 minutes worked. And let's check to see how they came out. Um, even though um, last time they were a little hot, I still touched them. <laughs> immediately I was like it's okay I'll be fine and I was fine they were a little hot um, so I was just handling gently um, feeling around and they were hardened so it took me 35 minutes at 230 uh, degrees Fahrenheit so then I brought them over to my uh, desk and just showing them off to y'all how they came out I absolutely love them you know for them being my first ever clay anything I was very proud and I decided to go ahead and start with the cat 
I wanted to do like a purple cat because I love the color purple and I did this like lavender color first and um, I, I just wanted the lavender as a base because I do have like a glitter paint so I decided to do the glitter paint next um, but the cat I feel was the hardest you know it was the first one so it's gonna be the hardest one to work with um, I am using a little bumble fan that I have I actually met one of my best friends in bumble BFF so <laughs> I have a lot of bumble merch <laughs> Thanks to Bumble, they're awesome. <laughs> this is not sponsored, I promise. They're just a really cool company. Um, Bumble BFF's awesome. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and use this uh, purple shimmery like paint. Um, I actually really like the shimmers. I was like, we're a sparkling punk. We need some glitter. We need some sparkle. So I went ahead and used that. And honestly, there's trial and error with these, right? So I had to do quite a few coats on it, especially because this paint is kind of weird. So next I decided to do the tombstone. I was like, I don't have the exact color for tombstone, so I decided to do like this light gray and then mix a little bit of black in it to get like this dark gray, which is perfect tombstone type color. I painted it all the way around and the corners. Um, I tried not to paint the back, but I, I don't know how everybody paints these. It, it's so hard to just paint them flat, I feel. So I, I tried, I tried though. And um, then I went ahead and did my candy corn. I added yellow and this shimmery orange. I love it so much. And I added the, um, the white too. So first I went ahead and I started off with the orange shimmer in the middle because it's absolutely adorable and it is a little bit thicker than the other ones. So, oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. I'm sorry. This shimmer is just absolutely adorable. And then I did this matte yellow at the bottom with the orange shimmer be the highlight of it all. And um, afterwards, we do end up getting some uh, white. I know it's white already, but when you look it up, up, up close like you could tell that there's no paint so I want to make sure that I painted that part white so I am going to add some white onto the tip of the candy corn just so everything has strokes and it has consistency so afterwards I was just checking my cat my cat got really messy as you can see <laughs> So I was gonna go ahead and do um, the face, but it was still a little bit wet. So I decided to do the R.I.P. on my little tombstone and it looks amazing. Next I did the moon and I decided to, um, oh no, I decided not to do the moon because it's like, what colors should I do the moon? I had all these ideas. I decided to do that hat, the witch hat came out perfect with the lavender uh, strap in the middle and I decided to do a black hat. I wear a black witch hat pretty much all the time. Um, if you know me personally, you know that I wear a witch hat like all the time. Even my mom was like, why are you wearing that for the family pictures? And I'm like, I love it. She's like, it's not Halloween anymore. And I'm like, it is for me. <laughs> it's Halloween year round for me, literally all the time. <laughs> so I absolutely love how the switch hat came out. I did have to do a couple coats and then I went ahead and put it down to go ahead and complete the exercise. After I went back to the candy corn and I added this adorable little face. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I did need some finer brushes because the bristles on my brushes were going a little bit out, but that worked. The cat, on the other hand, uh, all I will say is we didn't end up with this face and you'll see that later on. This face di didn't work out. I, yeah, I'm not a fan of that face. Um, I went ahead and did the pumpkin next with the shimmery orange again. Oh my gosh, that shimmery orange is absolutely amazing and to die for, like, it is perfect. I love it so much. I, uh, these shimmer colors are amazingly awesome. Um, so I went ahead and just added quite a few like layers and did strokes in a way where it looks like the lines of the pumpkin and then I went back and did more black on the hat. Pretty much just all the little touch-ups that I felt like had to go in there. Um, since these are my first pins, I am actually pretty proud with what I got so far. I started the um, coffin and I did like that brown like um, a wooden look with this chocolate it's literally called chocolate <laughs> paint 
but uh, it was very wet. It, it was honestly one of the wettest paints that I own, and it took quite a few layers, but it's okay because I was supposed to get that wooden look, so I didn't mind it. Next, I painted white on my ghost, and you can't see it now, but up close, the paint strokes made the ghost actually look like opaque how it's supposed to look like there you can kind of see it right there and I was just like oh my gosh this is perfect and so I added the brown on top of the um the pumpkin I had to do like a lot of sections because I had to wait for stuff to dry off I was like what should I do with this cat I kept going back to the cat and I was just like obsessed with my other pins I then decided okay I'm not gonna go back to the cat yet let's just add a face onto this pumpkin and I added this like jack-o-lantern smi smiley face you'll see that I always use like pretty much the same jack-o-lantern smile on most of my products because I just like that smile but I'll probably use more in the future and then I said all right I think it's time to just kind of look at all these and see what we're gonna do next um, I went back to the pumpkin again but I added black for highlights on the eyes and on the uh, the mouth again I will say uh, definitely wait for everything to be dry I am so impatient and that's why I had my fan with me um, I added just some uh, jack-o-lantern orange is what it's called and I mixed it with the brown to try to give it some shading like to add the strokes of a pumpkin and I was thinking about doing it with the candy corn but I decided not to then I went to the moon and I was like alright let's just do like a regular yellow moon um, I was kind of thinking of sailor moon style type moon and then I also thought of like just like the cheese moon <laughs> um, so I was like I'm just gonna make it yellow it's super cute and then I went ahead and let that dry um, afterwards I was like okay what to do now let's go back to the ghosty the ghosty is dry with its little strokes and i just added the most adorable little face it's so plain and simple but i love it like just look at it boo such a cute ghost and then i was like maybe i'll add some shading i said no looks perfect now we tackle the cat again i decided let's just do more sparkle and let's completely cover that face because i hated that face like i was just like i'm not dealing with this face I'm gonna just add a sparkle on top and see see where we go from there because it was just a disaster. So I went ahead and just tried drying it and doing many different layers over and over again um, to just completely cover that. And this paint was very thick, so it was just it's a kind of difficult paint to deal with. But it's okay, it kind of gave it texture too, so I think with the um, the UV resin it's going to look really awesome because it's going to be all glossy and shiny, so I actually don't mind um, how these look. So next I went ahead and added a different face. I decided to go more with like a kawaii type face and this one looked so much better like i absolutely love this little kawaii face and i gave it some little ears and it was just perfect like it it fixed it up i decided to add some nice whiskers to it and i was satisfied with my cat like i love it it's nice and sparkly the only thing is the back ended up a little bit messy but hey hey these are my first pins these are my first pins it's okay it's okay and nobody ever really looks at the back so Next, I decided to go back to my witch hat and I added a little crescent moon in the middle. Oh my gosh, I am so glad I added the crescent moon. I just did it with the matte yellow, but you know, I should have done it with the shimmer yellow, but I didn't realize my shimmer yellow until later. I went back to my tombstone too and I decided to do shading. Um, I did shading all around on the edges and gave it this like dark look. So it looks like it's literally in a shadow um, and it gives it more of a dark like you know you're in a graveyard type look so then I added the letters onto the um, the casket the yeah casket that's another word for it and I put rip RIP and I kept touching the cat just to make sure it was drying so here's where the shimmer yellow came into play and I decided to go ahead and add shimmer yellow into the inside as a highlight oh my gosh 
the cat that jumped over the moon, or what is it called? The cow that jumped over the moon. The cat that jumped over the moon. What the heck am I talking about? And then I added some, like, more, um, uh, like, black type, old school looking on that casket, and then more highlighting onto the pumpkin. But, yeah, that's pretty much how these came out. I, honestly, my favorites are the candy corn, the, um, the, um, tombstone, the witch hat, the moon, um, I, I honestly, I, I can't choose a favorite. I like the ghost a lot, the hat, and the candy corn. I don't know, I like them all. <laughs> I like them all. But these, um, I will be posting more clay pins on my Etsy, so if you want to check out my Etsy, look down below. I'll be making more designs as well, so I'm so excited, and different colors. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe this video, and I yeah, thanks so much for watching. I will see y'all next time. Bye, everyone! <laughs> Alright, bye!